This is a new series of short videos I'm doing looking at scenes. Why they work, don't work, or kind of work. Scenes are the building blocks of films. If your scenes are good, you're a long way to your film being good. This is a scene from a TV show called Rebellion. I wanted to look at this scene because it's easy to pick apart terrible scenes. But I'm sure the goal for the filmmakers watching this channel isn't just to be better than terrible. This scene is not a disaster. The writing and acting are good, but because of questionable editing and camera positions, it doesn't have the tight grip on the audience that it should have. If you want to watch it first, it's on Netflix between these time codes. But if not, let me give you a breakdown. General Lowe brings orders to Mr. Hammond to round up members of a resistance group. Lowe says minor civil servants like May here are frequent sources of leaks. She doesn't like the insinuation. Hammond says his boss would have to make the decision to act and he's away. Lowe insists something must be done and says he has information the German Navy has smuggled in guns for use by the resistance groups in Ireland. Hammond refuses to do anything until he hears about this officially, so General Lowe storms out. I think there are two main things which stop this scene from being really effective. One, in any scene, every time the camera moves to a new position, it takes a split second for our brain to figure out where we are. When this is done smoothly, we don't notice. But when it's not, it's jarring and our brain is wasting a second thinking about where we are now instead of thinking about what's happening in the story. This scene starts on a mid shot on May. From this we don't know where the character is in relation to anyone else. It cuts out to a master to establish where everyone is. But this shot is so quick that first time around, I for one didn't register the layout. We then have a couple of reverses and from there we go back to the isolated mid shot on May and General Lowe makes the comment that causes her to look at him. Many of the people treasonable to England are to be found in the lower ranks of the government's service. But to see Lowe's reaction, we jump out to this profile on him. This is a jarring cut. The camera has jumped the line between these two characters. So even though they're supposed to be looking at one another, they're both looking in the same direction. You could have gotten away with this if the master had established their positions for longer, or if you'd come out further on this profile so May's shoulder was also in the shot. But as it is, it's a confusing cut, certainly on the first watch. This is not enough to ruin a scene, but it's enough so the audience's brains are wasting seconds subconsciously figuring out where they are instead of taking in the story. The second thing stopping this scene from really engaging for me is the main points of the story aren't hammered home. The way I understand it, there are three major things happening in this scene. The first is General Lowe telling Hammond, and by extension the audience, that an armed uprising is being planned. Addresses and secret arms stashes. This is basically exposition, and it comes across fine in a way that works for the story. The second and third points, the ones that are more character and emotion based are that Hammond won't officially record the General's warning that guns are being smuggled in. That's as may be, but we've not been advised of that officially. And two, May's subjective experience of what's happening. With these two things, I get both are there, but neither stand out above the rest. There's a lot of quick cutting back and forth, and neither of these points are given any space to breathe, so I'm not made to feel either of them. Hammond's reaction to the information about the guns isn't highlighted any more than anything else. For an attack here. We don't even see him for half the line. That's as may be, but we've not been advised of that officially. As for May's subjective experience of the scene, there are some close-ups on her, but they aren't held for any longer than the shots on the other characters. And for whatever reason, we move away from our eye line on this shot. So for most of the shot, we don't see our eyes, making it harder to empathize with her. You could say I'm nitpicking here, but going from just fine to great means nailing these details. For me, this scene doesn't get there. And for a filmmaker, it's important to figure out why. Thanks for watching. I'm trying to make shorter, more regular videos on things not already covered in a million video essays. 
If you found this video useful, please let me know in the comments.